Hi guys, welcome to the Math Rebbe. I'm your host, Anil. I know it's been a while, but I'm back. Except for Shiva Subhitama's next week. I'll be posting back-to-back -back episodes every week, starting this week and ending after the season is over. Before we begin this week's episode, I'd like to correct myself in an error I made in the previous episodes. At the end of Margin of Error, I had made the claim that for the majority of opinions discussed, we have no idea whether their opinion that we may rely on the approximations for pi and root 2 applies everywhere or only by non choshen meshpat. Since airing that episode, I found that the line the Rambam and Shulchan Aruch discussed, saying that people are very careful about their land, is actually a Gemara and Bav Metziah. Thus, it would seem that, in fact, nobody allows those approximations by choshen meshpat. With that out of the way, let us discuss how to keep the Mishkan from falling over. The Pesukim regarding the Mishkan say that there were 20 posts along the northern and southern walls of the Mishkan, each of which were 100 amos long and that there were 10 posts along the eastern and western walls of the Mishkan, each of which were 50 Amos long. Rashi innocently comments that there are 5 Amos between each post. This poses a serious mathematical error. For 20 posts, there are 19 gaps. If each gap is 5 Amos long, then only 95 Amos have been accounted for. Likewise, for 10 posts, there are 9 gaps. Rashi's numbers only account for 45 Amos. What happened to the extra 5 Amos along each wall? Your first reaction might be to say the beams themselves made up the extra five Amos, which is the Rivaz and the Abarbanel's opinion. However, the Mizrahi rejects this on two counts. First, the north-south walls require five Amos dispersed among 20 posts, making them each one and a half Tfachim wide. The east-west walls require five Amos dispersed among only 10 posts, making them each three Tfachim wide. Although Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda argue about how many Tfachim are in an Amma, everyone agrees that the Amos of the building itself were of six Tfachim. Therefore, different posts would be of different widths. Two, these are the posts of the courtyard. The posts of the Ol Moed were held up by nine Tefach poles, either three or six times as wide as the poles of the courtyard. The Mizrahi doesn't think there should be such a big difference. Instead, he infers from Rashi that each pole was one Amma, it's still smaller than the Ol Moed, but much closer. He holds that the five Amos mentioned by Rashi are the distance from the middle of one beam to the middle of the next beam. Thus, there are four Amos between beams. According to this layout, where there are actually 21 by 11 poles around the Mishkan, the gaps plus half an Amma from the beams on either side make 100 by 50 Amos. The Gor Aryeh rejects this on the grounds that the Kerns were exactly 100 by 50 Amos, leaving an extra half an Amma on each corner. He defends the Mizrahi by saying that the Kerns didn't have to cover the corners, just the gaps. The Lavush, however, rejects the Mizrahi with a different problem. According to this Pshat, there are actually 102 by 52 Amos around the outer perimeter, including the space between the Kerns and the poles. Even according to the Gori Aryeh's modification of the Mizrahi, that the Kerns indeed did not cover the corners, the Mishkan's down to 100 by 50 Amos. However, 21 poles plus 4 Amos times 20 gaps yields 101 Amos, and 11 poles plus 4 Amos times 10 gaps yields 51 Amos. Thus, the Mizrahi and the Gor Aryeh hold that there's one gap on each wall that isn't the same length as the others. For this lack of symmetry, the Lavush pauses his own shot. The Lavush Ha'ora says that each beam was circular for one Amma at the bottom, fitting neatly into the circular copper sockets. The beams themselves were semicircles with an Amma diameter. The corners were quarter circles to allow the curtains to wrap around neatly. Being half a semicircle, it had a diameter of half an Amma. He agrees to the Mizrahi regarding the 21 by 11 layout, but by taking off a half amma from either side, he avoids both his problem and the Gor Aryeh's problem. Plus, the perimeter of the courtyard was exactly 100 by 50 amos, being the most symmetric and arithmetically correct, as well as the easiest to read into the Pesukim and Rashi of all the Pshatim so far. The Maisa Choshev by Rabbi Levi ben Gershon gives one last Pshat in understanding Rashi. 
Like the Lavush, the Raubag's understanding is symmetrical, accurate, and easy to read into the Pesukim and Rashi, but he has the advantage of no poles being different shapes than others. He holds that there were beams between each pole that had the hooks to hold the kerns. These beams were each five amos long. The ones in the corners were just over three and a half amos long, allowing for two and a half amos to be left on the ends. According to his pshat, it doesn't matter how wide the poles themselves were. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. As a part of the double header spree, we'll be continuing with quite a bit more math related to the Mishkan.